Okay. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Fabio Alessandrelli. Uh, some of you uh, knows me by the name Fales, which is my IRC handle uh, with two S on GitHub. And I did uh, for the Godocon uh, a small presentation on uh, real-time online multiplayer with Godot Engine because I'm working on a uh, like fast-paced uh, multiplayer games. And uh, like some people asked me to add a few things today, uh, and I, I also have like. I tried the new RPC, high-level RPC uh, networking API, um, and I found it to be really interesting, but it, it uh, does have some limitation uh, and some, somehow some bugs for now, uh, but it's a new feature, it's, it's okay. Um, so I, I'm gonna discuss it um, a little bit, uh, trying to uh, like explain you what are my thoughts on that. Uh, first of all, forgive me uh, if like the presentation is not that good because I really didn't have time to prepare anything, so I'm kind of recycling a few of my old slides, and then I'll try to make some examples with code. Um, so uh, I, I, did, I wasn't even expecting to come here, uh, so it was really a last minute thing. So first of all, a very, very brief introduction. Like, why, like what do we want from multiplayer games? Like, uh, first of all, like the idea is to have multiple player, uh, play, multiple people playing together uh, from different locations, uh, and they have to feel it uh, like they are playing in the same room. Uh, this is a very important thing. Um, so there should be no input delay, uh, no lag on the like uh, like uh, objects in the screen shouldn't uh, swap from one point to the other. And of course, there should be no cheaters. Like you, no one should be allowed to do uh, uh, like something that is not uh, expected from the game. And of course, no one should be able to impersonate someone else. Uh, so the the current uh, high level API is uh, really nice because uh, high level multiplayer API is really nice because it's really easy to set up. Um, but there is uh, like one huge problem with it, uh, and that is that. Uh, as of now, uh, you cannot uh, tell the system, like the engine, uh, this specific function can only be called by this person. Uh, and this is a problem because uh, like, uh, if no one uh, do nasty things with your code or with your program, everything is fine. Uh, but if someone starts doing nasty things, they actually can impersonate another, uh, another user, another player. Um, and I, I did a small patch uh, to kind of try to fix that. I'm not sure it's the best way to do it. Uh, and like um, Yuan proposed to have a get RPC ID uh, caller, something like that, which basically when your fun function gets called, you can uh, ask the system which, which, one, which player is calling this function. Um, this is good because it will work, uh, but I think it uh, kind of uh, leaves too much of the work on the game developer, uh, and I think it could be done easily automatically by the engine. So uh, first of all, I'm gonna show you the exploit. It's not really an exploit. I mean, <laughs> it, it's just how it's supposed to work for now. Uh, so uh, I made this uh, a specific uh, code, which is like a bit. A bit long, but I'll try to go through it really, really fast. So, yay, it's a lot of code. I start with that. I know, it's a lot of code. Um, so uh, what I did is uh, set up a singleton in Godot engine, um, which is like network. Uh, and then like you have a, it, it has a root, which is where, like, which is owned by the server. And then you have, like, when a client connects, it automatically adds a node to that root node, to, to that network node, uh, which, which has the name, the ID of the client. And uh, so, so this way, basically, when you receive a message, or, and, and that node is owned by the client, and that means that the client can send a remote procedure call to that node. Um, uh, and you can know which node has been like which node received that given message. So you can tell, okay, since this node is owned by uh, Remy, I'm sure that this message come from Remy. Um, the problem is that you can actually um, impersonate someone else. So uh, I made like this small example and like 
the, this one is the server, and it can, can you send message to the clients. You see, like, uh, and the clients can send message to the server. So, uh, and the server knows the ID, like from three zero blah blah blah. That's the the client that sent the message. Uh, the problem is that if the player changes the code, uh, it can like impersonate someone else. So in this case, the one on the bottom right is impersonating the others, and uh, is impersonating someone else, and he's sending a message saying, uh, uh, I'm Fabio, but, um, but the server says, uh, uh, this message come from me, okay? Something like that. You can see here it says from 110, uh, blah, 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 but it's actually 160 posing as someone else. Uh, and the code to do it, it's actually quite easy. Uh, I'll show it to you. Uh, script uh, uh, tests. So what it does is basically the clients, like every client, change his mode to master. Okay, uh, change the basically change the mode of all the other client nodes to master, like he owns them, and then he contacts the server on that specific channel, let's call it, like on that node. Uh, the server is configured so that uh, that specific node is a slave, so it's controlled by the client, but the server doesn't know which client should actually control it, like it's not specified which client. Um, for this reason, uh, if, if a client cheats this way, uh, the, there is no way for the server to know uh, actually who sent the message. Uh, as I said, like having a function that tells you which, error, which client sends uh, the request is possible, a specific function, but that will mean that every time you make an RPC request, an RPC function, like a function that can be called from remote clients, you always have to check like uh, in, in your code, and that like, can be boring because you might have like 50 functions, and uh, every function you have to do. If the ID is the one I expect, then do this. Otherwise, this client is chasing for every function. So I said, why don't do that in the engine? So my idea was, okay, uh, we have this uh, uh, way of doing things. We have the master, and we have the slave for now. Uh, let's say that we have, like, instead of setting the mode, like master or slave, we set the owner, we set the ID. So, like, instead of calling, um, like I do here, like set network mode master, I call on the server uh, set network owner, or, yeah, I think I called it set network owner, set network remote, but that's just a name, and you set the ID of the owner. That way, the, the engine knows that that specific node the, or the functions of that specific node can only be called by a client that identify with that ID. Um, so uh, to, to show it to you, uh, so the, the big difference basically is that instead of setting, of calling the function uh, set mode master, you have to call set remote and you have to know the ID of the one that is gonna own that node. But that's kind of easy because like when a client connects to you, you know the ID. So, and actually the library we use ensures that the client can't fake the ID. So that, that's gonna work uh, because it's based on IP port plus the ID, a secret. So there's a little bit of uh, logic behind. Um, so the idea is that I made, uh, uh, uh. Oh, network security. So, okay. Well, okay. So this is basically uh, running a patched version of the engine. Um, we just does that. So it basically uh, changed the function set network mode um, to another function. Uh, let me show it to you. Network. Yeah. So uh, instead of calling like in the client node, like the server creates as this, as I said, this singleton, which is owned by the server, and then he adds nodes, like one node for each client that connect. Um, 
and, and instead of setting those nodes as slave, or as slave, like is owned by someone else, it sets them like set network remote ID, and it gives the ID of the user of the player uh, that is connected that can, that is the only one allowed to, to make calls to that node. So it's, beside this, is really the same code as before, and, but the big difference is that if I, so the, the thing works, of course. No? Why are you not working? Um, sorry. Uh, I think I did a small, small change. This wasn't here before in the other demo and shouldn't be there. It was just a test I was doing. Uh, so this will just send a message to all the clients. And of course, the clients can answer back. Uh, but now, if, if a client tries to cheat, it won't work. And the engine will actually say, and like, will spit errors. In the future, it might be like even um, uh, uh, like a. Uh, a signal that sends it to you saying like, this client is misbehaving, what do you wanna do? You wanna kick it, do you wanna like, just to notify you? And it says, wait, um, the guy I received the call from is not the owner of this node. And now uh, the engine knows it because like, instead of setting just that slave, you say it's this specific client that, that owns the node, so no one else can call those functions. Additionally, um, and this is something I was thinking today, uh, and I actually made it work, but it's, I don't know if it's worth it, is that like with this configuration for now, the server cannot call that function on the node because that node is actually owned by the client itself. So the client will refuse the call from the server saying no. I'm, I am the owner, you can't be. Uh, but the server is always trusted. Like, it, the server is authoritative. It's the server that decides. So if the server is not trusted, uh, you did something wrong in your game design. Um, so for this reason, uh, you can actually have, uh, we can have a, a kind of full duplex channel uh, by just saying that uh, the ID of the caller must be the client that owns it, or the server, because the server is always allowed to do that because the, you run the servers. And uh, if you connect to a server and that allows player to cheat, is because like that's not an official server. That's someone who hacked the server and, and you realize that player can cheat on the server and you say, okay, I'm gonna use official server, which have not been modified where, where the game behaves like it should. Uh, but there is no way for a client to actually impersonate someone else. Uh, so I, I think this is a like, quite important thing to do. And I think it's better this way than with uh, having uh, like a function that tells you who is calling the, that given function, because besides like, that small difference when you set up the scene, everything else is handled by the engine. Like the developer, the game developer doesn't have to care about it at all after that. He just have to know that when a client connects, he have to set for that client, for, for, uh, like for that client a node that is owned by him. But only that. And after that, the engine will take care of it. Um, and, and again, the, the difference like uh, patching the, the um, uh, patching your game, like switching from our current approach to this new approach is like really, really few lines of code. And, and to show you that, I uh, patched uh, the simple multiplayer uh, example demo, which I also had to backport to 3.0, uh, so uh, some animations doesn't look really good, but that's, that's mainly because I didn't port the whole game uh, like properly, uh, but every network call works. And, and it was like, I did it today, basically. So it's like really an hour of work, a couple of hours of work, no more than that. So I'll try to show it to you. 
Oh, no, I can't do this. Okay. Um, no. Um, Kutu, demo, projects, networking, simple multiplier, three. Let's see. Okay, so yeah, this guy is the host, and then this one will be the client. I'm gonna call him client, just because. Uh, and the game actually works. Uh, you should be able to see it. Like, so, yeah, uh, as you, yeah, I think the lag is uh, due to the, um, because I see it in real time, I think it's the streaming software that is a bit laggy, honestly, because like it's really smooth here. Uh, but anyway, um, but the, yeah, there is a little bit of offset that's uh, due to the conversion. Um, and, and this uh, has been done with the new modified version of the engine, uh, and this way like you cannot take control of other players, which is kind of a, problem otherwise. Um, and, and it works, it's, uh, and the code itself, like changing the code was like super easy. Like, it's basically changing, um, like is network master to am I the server, which has the ID um, one, uh, changing, uh, slightly changing the register player because in this demo it was called on a node that was owned by the server. Uh, so, and that's no longer doable uh, for security reason, of course, otherwise the whole castle we built uh, will fall. Um, so I just adding a new scene dedicated for registering the player at first, which is owned by the client uh, that connects. So as soon as the client connects, uh, you should see it below. Uh, as soon as the client connect, uh, it will load this new client scene, attach it as a node and say, whoa, okay, uh, the network remote, uh, the network remote for uh, this uh, specific node is the client that just connected. So he is gonna be the only one allowed to make calls on that. Um, and um, yeah, it's, uh, it looks a lot, but it's actually like 20 lines, I think. And it's mainly changing, uh, well, a reminder normalizer, that, that's actually another thing. It, doesn't, it has nothing to do with the <laughs> Uh, yeah, I should have been another commit, uh, but uh, doing everything in two in an hour is uh, kind of you might have leftovers, you know. <laughs> so, um, so like, I think this change is uh, is like it, it adds a small layer of complexity because the game developer needs to know that you have to assign a specific client ID to a node. Otherwise, it will only be owned by the server by default because that's how we games work, you usually have very few nodes, very few things that are controlled by the clients. The rest is all done by the server. Uh, but once he does that, he will always be sure that uh, no one can cheat unless he actually uh, do bad things in like other aspects. But uh, he basically cannot receive a call on something that he thinks is owned by someone, but he's actually receiving the call from someone else. And he doesn't have to care about it, like having to check it, because the engine will not, will never allow it. Um, so this is like one of the thing I I noticed about the, this API. Uh, but I think beside that is really, really super interesting, and I think it's really, really awesome for those uh, kind of games where you don't really have real time. 
uh, like turn-based game or game like that. And the reason for that is, uh, I'm sorry, I think, yeah, I hope my battery lasts, otherwise. Okay. Um, so the, the reason I'm saying this is that I, I feel like there is another limitation. Uh, the other limitation is that um, the RPC systems uh, can be, uh, like when you send an RPC, it can either be reliable or, un or unreliable. Uh, reliable, um, basically reliable messages, reliable RPC are sent, uh, are resent if they don't arrive and they will always be resent in order. So if you have multiple, like you are updating some kind of information, some kind of state or something like that, you, you, like you have to wait for the previous one to complete and be sure that it delivered and then you can send the new one. But sometimes you might have, like, you want reliable um, connection, reliable messages, like, sure to be arrived, but they are, uh, like, on unrelated things. So I might have one for the statistics of the game, and then I might have another one for, uh, I don't know, changing names, and then I want another one to updating the state of the weapons you have, or something like that. Things that are not really real time, so you don't need to have them unreliable. Like, you can do them reliable. Uh, but you don't want them to interfere with, with each other. You don't want the, uh, like the, the library or the engine to wait uh, uh, in sending the new weapon uh, updates uh, because he's still, wait, he's still trying to send the statistics update because those are unrelated things. Uh, so another thing that I think is like is missing or was missing is the ability to use multiple channel. Since we are at Mozilla, uh, somehow like, like WebRTC does. Like there is this very, very nice feature uh, which is most, most of the time overlooked, I don't know why, uh, in WebRTC, uh, which is the data channels. Like with, uh, um, with uh, WebRTC, you can um, basically create data channels that doesn't send video, doesn't send audio, it just data, raw data, and you can send them the way you want. Like you can send them reliable, you can send them unreliable, you can send them unreliable but ordered, which means that if a message arrive out of order, it's gonna be dropped. It's not gonna wait and resend, it's dropped. It's old, it's, it's too old, it's dropped. Um, and of course, this again only works if you have separate channel for uh, separate data, ta data types or data you have to send. So in my game, I don't know, I have the state, uh, I have to update on the client the state of the position or, and the energy of the ship, of the spaceship, because it's a space game, because uh, everyone loves space. Um, but, and then I have to send the update of the lasers, like the, the guns, where are the lasers flying right now? And I have to send the updates of where are the power-ups around in the game? Uh, but those are unrelated stuff. And when you, like, when you do networking, you really want each message to be as small as possible. And you, like, if you want fast delivery and re pseudo reliable delivery, uh, you don't want to exceed like 600, 700 bytes. Like the MTU is around one kilobyte, a bit more. Uh, but like, if you go above 700, 800 it's bytes, it's m most likely that uh, you'll get dropped by routers, especially if the network is a bit congested. Um, so like, this way you can like, create multiple packets, uh, like use different channels. What I'm doing in my game is I use one channel for the spaceship, one channel for the lasers, one channel for the power-ups. And those are unrelated data. Um, and they have their own ordering. And the library, uh, inet library we are using, can handle that. It's just not exposed yet. Uh, and this is actually the reason why I, uh, one of the reasons I developed the, like a module, which I called BetterNet. Uh, I was, you know, a bit uh, too pompous at the time. Uh, it's not better, it's just different because um, it's basically, okay, uh, RPC is really good because it's easy um, and it's really, really good when you don't have like this pressure on real time. Like if a message arrive, 
half a second after, it doesn't matter. Maybe it's a turn game, maybe it's... But you don't have to, do, to deal with the low-level things like uh, TCP, connect, uh, TCP, uh, say, uh, encapsulation, and you know, all those things. You don't have to deal with it. You just call RPC, and it's going to be called. But there is another method which is very common, especially in real-time real games, and that's like message-oriented. Uh, this kind of raises a little bit the, um, the requirements from the developer, because the developer have to deal with the message. Uh, he has to build the logic to know when a specific message is allowed and when it's not, and so on. But at the same time, it gives you like better optimization of networking, which, in, again, in real time, especially fast-paced multiplayer game, uh, like where things move really, really fast and like 50 milliseconds can, will make the difference. Uh, it, it, it's, I think it's kind of important to have that. Um, and it doesn't have to be, again, because games are a huge uh, thing. So like there are a lot of types of games. So there, there's not usually one solution fit all, like one for all solution. Um, so like I think they can be concurrent, like they can both coexist. And I use the same library. Um, so I'm going to show you a very like, small and brief example of how it works. Again, I did it this one too this morning. It's uh, like really 100 lines of code, less than that, like 50 lines of code. Um, I'm going to show it to you. And, uh, and then like, you tell me what you think about it. And, and it's OK if you think it doesn't look good. And, uh, I won't get mad about it, don't worry. <laughs> so it should be this one. Yeah, so this is a very, very simple uh, Tris game, you know, the tic-tac-toe. Yeah, it's, it's called Tris in Italian, sorry. <laughs> Um, so, and the idea is that uh, now you see it very, very ugly because I did it this morning, but uh, this one is a client, ah, laggy, uh, and then this one is another client, and then this one is the server, okay? So the server does nothing. If, if I press the button on the server, it actually does nothing. Uh, if I press the button on the client, it will oh, put a no, okay? So it's like I, I'm... It basically sends a message to the server saying, hey, uh, I want to use this. And, and if it tries again, it doesn't work. I will show you why. Uh, but then the other one can actually put an X. So it's, it's just trees. And the server does nothing. It just, uh, basic, the server just decides for the others. It receives messages and then says, yes, you're allowed to do that. No, you're not allowed to do that. And then he updates the message. Um, and the big difference is that, again, it's message-oriented. And that means that, um, so this is the server. What? OK. Can I hide this? Can it go there? Do we have more space? Yes. So basically, I have this additional node, which is called the uh, inet node. Um, and it basically somehow act like the scene tree does now. And I also have um, a, an extended version of the uh, networked multiplayer inet, uh, which I call the inet packet peer, which really behaves like a packet peer, like a lower level UDP, like you can actually call put packet and, uh, and stuff like that if you want. But while the, the node I created kind of abstract a little bit uh, this thing, the same way uh, the SYN3 does for the um, network multiplayer in net, like our RPC system. Uh, so what you do is uh, kind of the same, uh, peer, create server. Uh, the big difference here is that you can set up the number of channels you want. Like I want three different data channels, you will create three different data channels. Um, it also, and then I use uh, the node and I connect the name of the mm, signals are the same, like uh, network peer connected when a client connects, because this is the server scene. Um, and then 
uh, I have another, I added few signals, which are uh, basically peer packet and server packet, uh, which you can register to because the node itself will automatically fetch the message for you uh, when it receives them on the network. And you can configure it to do it in the idle, uh, like between, in the time between one frame and the other, or in the fixed process. Like if you have a game that is based on physics, you cannot update your stuff in the uh, uh, like frame time because you will get out of sync from the physics. So like my game uses a lot of built-in physics, so I really need to update uh, position and stuff in the, um, especially from the server, the one that sends it. But anyway, it, it should be in the fixed process, like in the physics process. Uh, so that's a small configuration you can do here like you can decide when you want to receive the signal and when you want to poll. So you can say check for new messages in the frame time but deliver them in the fixed frame. Like this way you kind of lower a little bit the uh, cost of networking on the CPU. Uh, it's probably not worth it though. Like if you need the fixed process, you probably want them, both of them on the fixed process. Um, so, uh, so I can register like pure packet uh, client message, uh, and then uh, the same way as we do with the scene tree, you can do the same thing on the inet node and just tell him like this is your peer, deal with it. Uh, and now like this is the message I can receive. Like so, if I receive the client connected, I'm gonna say okay, I have a new client. That's everything I do in my code. Uh, and then when I receive a client message. Uh, I basically decode it because I always encode it in a byte array. There's this beautiful function that just converts a variant, uh, a good of a good of variable, to uh, a byte, an array of bytes, and then decode it. Uh, it's not the best way to do it because you can pack it way more. Like in my game, I'm I'm actually packing every. I'm like using two bytes uh, instead of four for some integer because I know it's not gonna be more than. Uh, than, than two bytes and stuff like that. Um, and then uh, here I have to do though a little bit of logic, like the logic of my game. It's a turn game, so I'm gonna say, uh, is it the turn of the guy that is calling me, that is like sending the message, or is it not his turn? If it's not his turn, it will just print, not your turn. Uh, and that's the reason why if the guy if he puts an O and then try to put another O, the server will actually say, not your turn. You tried it, but it's not your turn. Um, and then, like, and this is just the thing that actually set the text as O or X, depending on who's sending the message. Uh, and then he just relies broadcast to everyone, like I have this function that is broadcast, which uh, is only available on the server that sends to all the client a uh, specific message. And in this, in this case, like the position of the tile, which has to be set and the value that has to be set in there. It's like a very, very simple example just to show you the idea behind it. Uh, and this is the server. The client is pretty much the same with less logic because yeah, of course, create client um, and then uh, you have server packet instead of client uh, packet because you know it's coming from the server. The ID is always one. Um, uh, this is just uh, connecting the buttons in the scene so that when I press it, I like the, the client just send to the server, send to one. Um, I want to put my symbol on that position. And this is this application, basically. Oh, and when it receives the server packets, it sets the text, because the client doesn't update itself. Like, it doesn't, when, it, when you press a button, it does not update the, the, the button itself, it just sends the thing. And then if the server, if he receives the, the reply from the server saying, yeah, set that, then it does, otherwise no, because it might be that it's not your turn, and if I set the X, I get an out of sync between the two clients which would suck. <laughs> um, so one of the uh, nice thing of this approach is also that uh, 
you can run like client and server in the same scene uh, if you want, which is a bit more complicated with the other systems since it's uh, managed by the scene tree, which is a singleton. Uh, even though you can do some tricks and acts to, to have it like I did before in the previous example. Uh, but it's kind of hacky. Uh, it took me a while to get there. Um, so the, uh, one thing that uh, people asked me um, about is how do I make a dedicated server? Well, uh, the, the, the answer is actually in the scons build script. Because uh, scons, like when you build Godot, there's one platform that you can build for that is called server. I don't think it compiles on Windows, uh, but you definitely will in the future. Um, it definitely, oh, my, my battery is dying. Um, sorry. Did I turn off the screen? No, okay. <laughs> okay, the laptop will survive. So when you build for the server platform, um, it basically builds an headless version of Godot, which has a dummy renderer, uh, dummy sound, uh, and stuff like that. Uh, sadly, it's broken for now in 3.0. Of course, it's gonna be fixed. So I made an example on 2.1. It's really the same. Uh, I'm using my module on 2.1 uh, because I backported the, this module like better net. I definitely have to find a better name for it. Um, uh, I, I, so um, it basically, <laughs> so if you see uh, this client, no server. So the server, like I can call it like this, and this is just the server part. I'm basically running only the server scene. You can see it here when it updates, yeah. Um, but I can also run it headless, hopefully. Why did you assume? Bro, yeah. Um. It should be granted. So, if someone is interested, like the comment now. The command is this one, scons, server, p equals server, tools, no, you cannot build it with tools. And the target is either release the bug or uh, release. But it should be already compiled with that module, so it's kind of strange that he's saying that the module doesn't exist. Okay. Okay, now it's, um, why? It's compiling from scratch, it's never gonna finish. Uh, well, I wanted to show you this, but uh, apparently I messed up in that hour. I prepared everything and I compiled it uh, in the wrong place. So why? Security. Yeah, well, um, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm gonna show it to you with the UI, but you have to imagine it's really the same thing. Like, uh, as you see, uh, okay, let me close this for now. Oh, 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 maybe this is the problem, actually. I've, write an, I've wrote an X, uh, let me check. Uh, let's stop this guy. Nope. Now uh, it's uh, 
Identifier not found. I didn't compile uh, the server with the module in it. Uh, I probably have an out of uh, sync version of the server. But it, you can, it, it's really the same. Like if I run this scene in the, like, like it's the edit, like the regular one, it's this. This is just the server. Uh, so, uh, and if you run it with the server binary, like platform server, like the one compiled with P platform equals server, it's gonna run the same exact code, uh, just without the interface. So, and it doesn't require uh, the OpenGL, basically. So you don't need OpenGL, so it can run on an headless machine without a graphic card, on a server, mm, like, without graphic cards. <laughs> Uh, and I, I, like I'm running, like for my game, I'm running a server on, uh, on um, I'm running a server version of Godot on, on a server I have uh, like around in some, I think in France actually. Uh, <laughs> um, and like it's an Atom, mm, so like really, really small server, but it, it has no problem because it doesn't need any kind, it, it's only CPU. There's no GPU, no rendering, no, all that part is taken off. Uh, like it's stripped away from, from the binary. Uh, but beside that, it's really the same. So this is the server, and then you can run the client. And uh, I can write a no, and I will get to know. So th this is the server, and the server actually behaves like a server. It's just, uh, so to people, people that ask, how do I make a dedicated server? Just build the platform uh, server, and it will work out of the box. The only thing you might want to do, if you don't want to do t two different exports, one for the dedicated server, and one for the actual game, because you don't, have, don't want to waste time on that maybe, um, or like you, you basically need the same resources. It's usually only the, the main scene that get launched that is different. Um, you can specify the scene you want to launch, like as, a, as an, an additional parameter after the, um, um, yeah, as an additional parameter after the, the executable. Uh, here I'm also adding slash path and the path to the project. But if you have a data, dot, uh, data pack file in the same folder, you could just do this basically. res server dsn and it would run like it wants in this case. But if I move to the folder where the thing is stored, I don't have to specify the path anymore because I'm already in that folder. So if you run it in a folder where you have the data pack file, you just specify the scene that you can call server.tscn, you can call it however it wants, and that's the scene that will automatically run the server. You can add uh, with the, the OS uh, get uh, command line args, the, the, the command that lets you read the input from the keyboard. You can add like parameters, so um, a client, like the, the one managing the server can do something like this, rest server tscn uh, minus port 25 or 250, 2000, like this. And like, it will work. Now, like the game will launch, you won't use that port, port because you have to code it, but it's just like really just parsing the command line arguments for which there's a function. So that's basically how I did my server, uh, dedicated server for, for my game. It's, uh, again, it's really, really simple. Uh, yeah, so I, like, since we have Juan here, I, I really, really, Hope I can convince you uh, to to include the message uh, the message based uh, inet uh, interface like the better net module which should be called like message 
uh, networking or something like that. Uh, because I think it's, it's not like th that and the RPC, they are not the same, uh, but there's, n there's no one which is better than the other. It really depends on which kind of game you want. So uh, if you need like really, really high performance networking, you want to deal with message. There's extra complexity in that, but you can get way better networking. Like you can get almost la lag-free uh, real-time game. Um, so maybe after this, I will show you, uh, maybe, uh, I will show you a little bit of my game, uh, maybe, but uh, since I'm still waiting to, pub to publish it in Greenlight, I don't want it to be recorded, so, and I don't want to ruin the surprise for everyone that's following uh, Steam Greenlight. Uh, it will hopefully be there in a couple of weeks, so, but if, you want, if someone wants a preview, I will show you later on, on the table. So, um, yeah, I think that's it for networking. Uh, Questions, time, question time. Okay, let's go. The cube. Speak, speak on the cube. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it doesn't work anyway, so it's all right. <laughs> Um, it, it's to that node, yeah. Well, actually, the other clients uh, can can know the ID of the, like a, a client can know the ID of the other clients if the server pass it, uh, but it's it's not going to be a problem because uh, uh, that ID is specifically tied to that uh, like. UDP connection. There are no such thing as UDP connection uh, because it's connectionless, but Inet does a, like the library we use as an abstraction, so it takes in the, the, uh, the IP address, the port, and a couple of other like parameters, and it also adds a secret internally. So that secret uh, that is not even exposed by the engine, like you cannot access it from the engine because it's internal for the library, and that guarantees that uh, and then the library allows you to uh, attach some kind of data of data to a specific client. Uh, so, and, and the, like, the engine itself assign an ID, like attach to every client an ID. But that ID, like even if I know the ID of another client, I cannot impersonate him with, with this fix, uh, basically. <laughs> uh, no, I Are you talking about message based or the RPC? No, like, no. In general. In general, about networking, you have like two main systems. Uh, you, you have all those types that are mixes. Uh, so you have like the server clients, uh, which is mostly like what you use. And you have the PFP uh, way of uh, doing networking, for example, like the RTS and other kind of games that are not based on server and clients. And for this kind of system, this kind of uh, security, yeah, I, I, honestly, I, I think no one, no one is uh, any longer doing peer-to-peer -peer connection, because if, if you don't, if you don't have an authoritative server, the other one can cheat, because he can fake stuff. Uh, so the way, uh, the way you, you need a server client. And you've used that for that kind of reasons uh, for FPS and this kind of games. But uh, you have some other type of games that would have so much, so much information that they actually run the simulation at the same time and they would be And that's the way, for example, like 
the NCLEX algorithm 2 or uh, Red Alert or every LTS actually uses the KFP system uh, again today. It's not like a. But, like, who decides, like, the, who decides when an action is allowed or not? Uh, it works differently, uh, actually, in a uh, game. Uh, it's deterministic. It works because it's deterministic. Uh, you have, yeah, a desync, uh, you have a desynchronization, and the game is like, uh, of course, you, don't, you can't know who cheated, but you can uh, stop the game at this point and say, okay, this, there was someone who cheated, and the game is, is actually desync. And uh, you have, like, some, some uh, kind of way to deal with it. But StarCraft 2 has servers. That's, that's a mix, but they have also peer-to-peer. -peer. It's a mix between peer-to-peer -peer and server. And you don't have uh, such a strong uh, server as you could have in the yeah. So, yeah, okay. So, the... I, I, I think my wonder is, like, uh, what are the results that the status of this? What, what do we do with that? Uh, do we say it's not working, it's not, it's not something so we should do? Or when we say like we can do that, so we have to think about uh, how making it possible. Uh, so. Yeah, so, uh, okay, so uh, the current situation, uh, it's never peer to peer, you always pass through the server, but you can, and you will still can after the modification, like after the patch, you can send a message from one client to the other client, um, and that means that the message will go to the server and the server will rely it to the, uh, to the other client, but will not process it, like it will not do logic, it will not do, and that's completely automatic. It's basically when you call RPC uh, ID instead of putting one, which is the ID of the server, you put the ID of the other client, and that's like handled automatically. Uh, so you're forced to call with the server before you can call to the other clients. Because the information is relied. It's relied by the server, yes. But uh, it, it's not processed. Like, it's not like you don't have to deal with the logic of it. Like the, the developer doesn't have to deal with it. And, and this is still very, very common. Um, because like if you do peer-to-peer, -peer, then you have to open ports. You have the problem of uh, you know all those kind of things like nothing and routers that block ports and while servers ensure you that's why almost everyone right now uses a server architecture and then maybe you have some messages that are uh, kind of uh, uh, sent directly from one client to the other but they are almost always uh, relied by the server sometimes they do like UDP punch through. Uh, to, to be able to like put in communication to clients without having to open the ports, which is like the main problem right now. Yeah, and that's why, uh, if you think about the point of StarCraft 2, uh, the only thing uh, that the server does, the only reason StarCraft 2 is going to server is because they have a worldwide community of players, and it's actually, they actually found that they can make groups faster if they, to, uh, if they communicate to that server, to a server locally. Uh, but that's what the that server doesn't check. I, 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 honest, I honestly think uh, it's, it's not worth it, um, but yeah. <laughs> it's fun to have.
Yeah. The same in surveys and both masters and most lectures and master and yeah. yeah. So this is pretty much the same as one. But that should be keep this uh, body distance. It it's pretty much the same with Yeah, just keeping the name uh, more yeah. consistent. Yeah. Uh, for the EMP model, I think you can use. Uh, I will probably in many cases for you want more control of what's going on networking. You want to use the network more directly as you have now. But I think we can use it. Don't do the cheap cheap maybe now. You can make a maybe model and double it from the S K or and use it. Yeah, yeah. The main problem with that, like I, I was uh, uh, exploring that possibility, the main problem with that is that uh, the inet function that I have to call is not exposed uh, as the API. So, like, uh, I, I, I would have to do the same as I did for when I ported it to 2.1, which is bundle the inet module like the inet library inside the module itself. So you will end up, when you load the, the, the external from the asset store, you will end up having two times the library, which, I mean, it's okay. It's, it's probably, yeah, f like 40 kilobytes or something like that, so. Yeah, it's a tiny library, but I something from the The problem is that uh, the problem with the player API is that it's kind of uh, uh, tries to be as simple as possible because, for example, But in that case, you can still like run the server and the client in the same like. Yeah. Can't use physics if you like. Yeah, but in, like uh, floating points uh, operation are like every machine does its own result. <laughs> So you may be uh, 
end up reducing interiors or something like that. So, yeah. in general, I mean, the way three games, uh, yeah, it's more work. Yeah. And also, I'd say one of the problems of the peer-to-peer -peer approach is that, of course, like that might work if you have two players playing with each other. If you start adding players, like three players, four players, that adds a lot of complexity, but also requires a lot more bandwidth on the client. Uh, no? Okay, yeah. Uh, so, uh, okay, so I didn't want to go into the text, but when you make a, a network for LTS, usually what happens is you create a return based actually game. It's LTS, but actually it's, it's, it's really terms uh, in terms of, uh, of latency. So what you do is you create a, a space of time, uh, like for example, uh, 200 milliseconds, uh, during the, the, uh, which you're uh, waiting for uh, every player's move. And once the uh, 200 uh, milliseconds pass, you, you process the moves in, on everyone's uh, simulation. And so that everyone is synchronized. Okay? And if a player is synchronized, if something is done wrong on one player, this player is going to be excluded. Uh, if it's a multiplayer game that like three or more players, uh, it's going to get to the end. Why, why is that important to make these kind of things? It's because all the calculation, the position of the units, and everything is not that same. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that's sent is the minimum, the strict minimum to do these moves. It's not even important and clicks because some clicks are not useful, it's the actions. Yeah. So one action for the move is made is the order is set and everyone is going to receive that order. But now the position moves, now everything, everything else is not sent, only the minimum. Amount, yeah. But that's actually also on, on, on like FPS games. It's just the server that sends more information. Usually the clients just send. Yeah, in this case, it uh, does that, yeah. Still, if you have a peer to peer approach. It's exactly the same state at the same time, so it's okay. But for a strategy game, you just have so many units and so many packages just kind of synchronized. Replay. And so that when you are going to play the game again, uh, with a replay mode, and you're going to have all the interactions for yeah. the time they went, uh, you're going to have the, the, the game play the new photo view as if it was like, uh, yeah. again, you're going to see the same game. Uh, so uh, that's how it's built uh, with this form of uh, games. In, in fact, it's so different from the uh, server plan based on that. Um, I'm not sure we should have something that would be so specialized that. Everything that uh, is going to be a mix between these two modes of the uh, multiplayer is going to be made complex. What I like about uh, having something that's very generic, uh, like the sockets and everything, is everyone can build his own system for yes. his game. Because some games are going to want uh, something that's more server fan based, but some games are going to want something more P2P, and some games are going to need to make a mix like StarCraft with you, uh, and that's very innovative. Very, very fresh and very new. Uh, but some other engine are still using pure peer to peer, like uh, the other part of the Yeah. Uh, but some others are going to use a, a mix that's more server based system, like mobile. Some, some mobiles use a little of peer to peer for the, the, the location of the reactor, but also for the medium smart control, but the rest is like server based. And having this kind of, of possibilities. And keeping that is, I think, very important. Yeah. Yeah. You can use the CD and then you can get it. Yeah. You don't have to start from the last one. To do peer to peer. Yeah, yeah, the low level will always be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the base, like, actually, the inet library now uses the low level. Uh, socket implementation, so like the 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 thanks. <laughs> so so that one. Yeah. Um, but like in general, 
one of the reasons I think most of the games move to a server architecture, server client architecture, is that uh, it's, it's getting less and less like this, but uh, during the history like of networking, like uh, online games, uh, usually the clients have very, very limited amount of bandwidth, while servers can have like a lot of it compared to the clients. So if you have like 10 clients peer-to-peer, -peer, like you will have to send your clicks to 10 different clients. That's like 10 times the data usage. If you send it to the server, you will maybe add, I don't know, 20 millisecond, 30 millisecond delay, 20 millisecond, but not it because usually servers are really, really fast, like they are on fiber optic. So, uh, and then you send it only once and then the server will set, rely it to all the others. So you will only use the server bandwidth and not the client bandwidth. <laughs> Actually, 200 milliseconds is lagging. Like uh, above 100 is unplayable usually. I was going to quickly say about that. But if you want to, I mean, what I wanted to say is we we need to keep in mind that we have both ways. Yeah. Uh, we need to keep that. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I hope. Thank, thank you. Thanks.